As a Christian, I like to go back to places where I've met with God in the past, places especially where prayer has been valid for centuries. For me, Worley Abbey is such a place. It was here that I made my ordination retreats, and it was here in this chapel that I received my ordination charge from Bishop Stuart Cross. Luke's Gospel ends with Jesus taking the Apostles back to one of their familiar places, the Mount of Olives, a place that often stayed with Jesus, a place where he taught them the Lord's Prayer, a place where uh, there was the home of Mary and Martha. A few years ago, I was standing on top of the Mount of Olives at a place called the Dome of the Ascension. It's a little canopy, underneath is a rock, in the rock is a rather indistinct groove which is said to be the footprint of Jesus when he ascended into heaven. Well, if you haven't been, I wouldn't necessarily go. I have to say, I looked at it and I thought, that's pretty hard to believe. The trouble is that that's how many people think of the event of the Ascension itself. The idea of Jesus gently lifting off from the earth and being taken up into the clouds may have inspired many artists and many stained glass windows. But it's a stumbling block to us today because we know that heaven isn't somewhere just above the clouds out of sight. But that's to miss the point of this really important event, which marks the climax of the earthly ministry of Jesus. Jesus did not ascend into the clouds because he thought that was the way to get to heaven, or as some kind of exercise in social distancing. Rather, Jesus was taken up into a cloud, into the Shekinah presence of the glory of God as the most dramatic and visual way that the disciples would have immediately understood meant he was leaving earth and returning to the bosom of the Father. Think of the place of those clouds in the Old Testament. When uh, Moses uh, went up Mount Sinai, a cloud uh, came down on the mountain and hid him uh, uh, from the, uh, the sight of the people for 40 days. Think of King Solomon uh, on uh, the dedication of the temple. Think of how the cloud came down and the presence of God was so powerful that worship had to stop. Think of uh, Jesus uh, taking Peter, James and John up the Mount of Transfiguration and being taken up into a cloud before their very eyes. So to those disciples, seeing Jesus enveloped by a cloud and taken from them would have demonstrated more powerfully than anything that he was returning uh, to the glory, the presence, the bosom of his Father. I love to think of Jesus uh, returning to, uh, to the Father at the Ascension with those words, mission accomplished, on his lips. But, for, uh, but Jesus' mission accomplished is our mission just beginning. Because before Jesus ascended into heaven, he gave to uh, the apostles uh, a, a promise and a command. The promise was that they would receive uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. And the command was that they would be his witnesses. Uh, in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, in Nelson, in Chorley, in Blackpool, and to the ends of the earth. Well, okay, I added some of those words in. But that's our privilege and our challenge. We rejoice in the gift of the Holy Spirit given at Pentecost, but we're challenged today to remember that the gift of the Spirit is not to make us feel special, but to empower us to be witnesses uh, to Jesus. The ten days between Ascension Day and Pentecost are now observed by Christians of every denomination and all around the world as a season or a novena of prayer called Thy Kingdom Come. The aim of this season is to pray for five non-Christian friends, five friends of yours whom you would love to see come to faith in Jesus Christ. It would make such a difference to their lives. 
There's no greater gift we could wish for any of our friends. As Archbishop Justin Welby has said, the best decision anyone can ever make at any time in any place is to follow Jesus Christ. I'm making a little bracelet with five knots in it to, remem to remind me of the five friends I'm going to pray for every day over the next 10 days. Perhaps you might like to do the same. And next time you bump into me or see me, ask me how I've got on with praying for my friends. And I may uh, do the same for you. And pray God, we will see by our witness and the work of the Spirit, our friends come to know Jesus as their friend too. I love you.